Now that I have the sides turned up or upset, and when you see this in writing, it will be spelled U-P-S-E-T-T. -T. It's a basket making term. I've always seen it spelled that way, so don't be surprised if you see it that way. What I'm going to do now is start with my weaver, and I'm going to weave it in and out all the way around the basket to start bringing up the sides. Now, the round basket doesn't have any corners like your square basket does, so it's done just a little bit differently. I'm going to find the bad side of the reed, and I think of the two, I'm going to call that the hairy side. I have my clothespins ready because I'm going to need these to secure things. This time I am going to start away from myself because it's just a little easier to manage. So I'll bring this one up and then this is the bad side because it's on the inside of the basket. And then I'm going to close pin it. So turning, get these out of the way. That one's on the outside. This is the inside. So now I need to take this one on the outside. And I'll close pin that. And then I turn. And at this point in time, I'm going to measure this around so that I'm overlapping two. And I'm going to cut this. That was a guesstimation on how much I need, but that big long piece was really getting in my way. So you'll see it'll be a little easier. I can even kind of weave almost left-handed now. Now every so often, you should put a clothespin on. You don't have to put one on every single one, but every now and then when you feel a little insecure with it, just put one on. Now I have come back to the beginning and I'm going to take the clothespin off only because I have this one secured. If I did not have that one secured, then I would make sure that I get a clothespin on there before I take this one off because otherwise it can just fly apart. So what I'm doing is I'm overlapping. That was where I started. So I'm overlapping that. I'm putting the clothespin back on. And then you can see from this side what it looks like. That's where my starter was. And yep, I had took that clothespin off so it just flew apart. So right on top of that one, and then it's going to be hidden under this one. I will forewarn you, when you get to doing this first row, you are going to fumble fingers and things will come apart, come loose on you, and you'll just feel very awkward. So keep in mind that is all part of the learning process. Now to do the second row, this is where I overlapped. So I'm going to now work on the outside of the basket when it's facing me. So I ended over here. I'm going to get another piece of reed, check for the bad side. And then I'm going to start it so that the end starts on the outside. And you'll see why when I come back around to finish. So over, under, over, under. Pack this down as you go. You don't want spaces in between these rows, so you push them down. This is where the overlap from the first row is, so you don't want to take both of these clothespins off or it will just all come apart. So that's why you put one where you started and finished and then where you ended and finished. Otherwise, you will not be very happy if you have to redo that again. Now it's safe to take off. 
And now we're back to the beginning. And this is where you're going to do your overlapping. So this is starter number one. And we're going to go to number two. Some people like to go over four. So I did go over four. One, two, three, four. Now, if I put that in there, I can see it's going to stick out. So I'm going to trim it back a little further. It is up to you as to whether you want to go over two spokes or over four spokes. As you can see, you get the same look regardless of that method. And in the next segment, I'm going to show you how we keep it from rocking and how we continue weaving up the sides.